Oftentimes, you hear people say, magic is a game for everyone, and maybe that's hard to believe when browsing through $500 or even $1000 decks, but there are plenty of different thriving formats with room for lots of innovation, and Popper is certainly one of them. So today, I'm going to show you a very special YourMTG themed Popper deck that you can buy, both online and in paper, for below $20, so who said magic has to be expensive? But, before we start the deck tech, let's go back a few years, when young baby Thire just discovered magic. It was a magical year, and the set Ravnica City of Guilds had just been released to the masses. The year was 2005. Young Thire started collecting cards and building decks with his friends, and there was one special thing Thire loved the most, when his creatures came into play and did something really cool. So his first two decks were green and red and black and green, and both were built around cards that did something when they entered play. Flash forward 13 years and here we are. Of course today's deck is going to be centered around the enter to battlefield triggers, and I think you can guess the colors. No, it's not green and red, or green and black, it's your. And what is that you might ask? Well, well, well Timmy, have you forgot already? Your is the name of a four color combination based on the Guild Pact card Your Tiller Nephilim. Surprised that Guild Pact is the set that came after Ravnica? No? Me neither. Your is the colors white, blue, black, and red. And our deck is called, not surprising either, Your Wins. And if you want to call it by its last name too, then that's fine. It is Creator Season 2 Final, but uh, never mind that. Our deck is a tempo control deck that incorporates many different combos and value plays based on cards with enters the battlefield abilities. So let's get an overview of the deck and then talk specifics. Just by looking here we can get an idea of what's going on. Cost reduction cards, creatures with ETB effects, and cards that flicker our creatures. Sounds pretty sweet right? Well it gets a lot better from here. We are running 24 creatures in the deck, and first off, we have 4 Nightscape Familiars and 4 God Pharaohs Faithful, cards that help us with our specific colors. The Nightscape Familiars are extremely important cards in the deck for assembling our combos. You'll see more of that later. The Faithfuls gives us a bunch of life and it's great against aggressive decks in the early stages of the game. And after that, we have 3 Seagate Oracles, 3 Augur Bolas, and 1 Cortasar. All these cards fulfill the same purpose, they dig us through our library via their ETB triggers, and you could say that they are the brick and mortar of the deck, what keeps it running. Usually just lands and one of these on your opening hand will straighten out into a pretty decent curve. And then we have our real crazy cozy combo cards. We have 4 Muldrifters, a true classic, 2 Dimrova Horrors and 1 Sages Row Denison. The Muldrifters serve as both amazing card draw, but it's also one of the win cons of the deck with good tempo flying as a true force to be reckoned with. Dimrova Horror is another big game ender, but perhaps the best part about it is the insane tempo plays you can achieve with it. In later turns of the game, that ETB trigger can be truly game ending, especially if your opponent is short on cards already. But that last card looks a little misplaced doesn't it? A pesky mill card? Well this little card can do some pretty insane things in just one turn. And all is thanks to our two final creature cards, two mnemonic walls, something you probably looked at and scoffed at during a Conic Master's draft. Now you might get an idea of what it's all about, well, let me make it clear for you anyway. You have cards like Nightscape Familiar to make your things cheaper. You have for example the Denison out, then you play the wall, return one of your flicker cards from the graveyard, flicker the wall, and repeat to mill your opponent for a bunch. Or if you have something like Ghostly Flicker and a Muldrift out, also, draw a whole bunch of cards, the value can get pretty insane. And that takes us to our non-creature spells. We have 15 of them, starting off with the flicker cards. We have 3 ghostly flickers and 3 snaps. Both are fantastic at the job and does something a little extra to help us out. Ghostly flicker flickers 2 cards, which as you saw earlier can result in some hilarious situations. Snap untaps 2 lands, which with the nightscape familiar actually gains you 1 or even 2 mana every time you play it. Both these are really the glue that keeps this deck running. And moving on, we have a few card advantage cards, with one Compulsive Research, one Foresee, and one Reaping the Graves. Compulsive Research and Foresee helps us dig through a big chunk of our deck and gives us many extra cards to work with later in the game. And Reaping the Graves acts as a safeguard in case Sages Row Denison or something else dies. Or if our opponent has a lot of removal, we can easily get back 3 or 4 creatures with this one. 
And rounding out our non-creature spells, we have some removal and some fixing, with two firebolts, one repeal and three prophetic prisms. Having the option to deal with our opponent's threats is very important in Popper, and with a flexible sideboard, we have the option to deal with most things. But the firebolts and the repeal should be diverse enough to deal with most things while also providing extra value for our deck. Firebolt is basically two cards in one and has great synergy with the rest of our deck, and Repeal is a flexible counter spell that can deal with almost anything and it replaces itself. This can be a huge swing in many games. And the Prisms are here to supply all four colors we need and can turn one of our colorless lands into something more useful, usually blue, but that takes us to our more advanced mana base. Now you might think having lands for a four color deck is expensive, but here we have a pretty reliable mana base for just around 4 bucks, which is pretty neat. Starting off with some of my personal favorites. We have 3 Azorius Chancery, 3 Dimir Aqueduct, and 3 Iset Boilerworks. My favorite lands from when I started playing. It has both looks and functionality, so gorgeous. These lands gain us extra mana, fixes our mana, and combos great with our next lands. 3 Crumbling Vestige, 2 Radiant Fountain, and 1 Mortuary Mire. Are you starting to notice the ETB theme of this deck? No, just me. I, I mean, what's not to like here? Life gain, card advantage, you name it. The amount of synergy here is off the charts. And if that was not enough, we have one Swiftwater Cliffs and one Tranquil Cove for that little extra. Finishing the mana base, we have one island, one plains, one mountain, and one swamp. Now, this looks pretty great, right? And despite only having $20 to work with, we have managed to pack a powerful sideboard to change things up in an instant. Something for every deck. Alright, so let's do this. We have one Electricery, one Dispel, and one Flame Slash. All great removal. We also have two Gutshot, one Hydroblast, and one Doomblade to help us with the specific decks. And then of course one Stone Horde Dignitiary for those aggressive decks, also one Core Sanctifiers, and one Leave No Trace for those pesky Bogles decks. And finishing off, we have two Pillage that can be exchanged for Stone Rain, if for example Affinity isn't a thing in your meta, and also three Mana Leak, one of the best counters ever. And now, let's take a look at a board state that could come up and how to navigate through this particular turn. Things can get pretty crazy. First off, let's have a visual look at that combo. Here we are in the later stages of the game, plenty of mana at the ready. We have one snap in our graveyard after digging some extra with Sigurd Oracle, a mnemonic wall and ghostly flicker ready on our hand. The denizen is in play along with a prism, a faithful and a muldrifter. Now, we are ready to go off with a real game changer of a turn. We'll play Mnemonic Wall using as many Ravnica Bounce Lands as possible. We return Snap from the Graveyard to our hand. Our opponent mills too. We play Snap and bounce the Mnemonic Wall back to our hand and we untap the Bounce Lands. Now we play our Ghostly Flicker and flicker the Muldrifter and our Prism, drawing another 3 and our opponent mills another 2. We have a whole new sleeve of cards in our hand and creatures at the ready. We use the rest of our mana to play Augur Bolas, our opponent mills another 2. And now this is just a small example of the things we can do with our combo pieces. This is not the perfect going off turn either, just something that will happen most games. The deck features many different synergies and combos, so you can be flexible in any way you play. But let's pretend you won the lottery or something, I don't know, and you want to upgrade the deck. Is that possible? Well, of course, Timmy, don't be ridiculous. Some of my recommendations include Preordain for the best card filtering possible, Chainer's Edict as a prime removal spell, seriously, it's really good, don't underestimate it. We also have more Hydroblast and also Pyroblast in the sideboard, and we can't have them in due to the crazy into geo pricing. Also, Bajuka Bog has another great land, and of course Spell Starter Sprite, one of the best common cards ever. All these cards will definitely improve your deck and make it even more competitive. So, there you have it, a cool themed Parper deck for just around 20 bucks. If you want to live Baby Fire's dreams, go out and win with your, make me proud. Also, if you have any recommendations or alterations in the list, be sure to let me know. A good deck is a deck built together. If you like this deck tech, please go ahead and leave a like down below. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe to RMTG. I'll make sure to, dis <laughs> to disappoint. <laughs> anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.